Hey, I'm Charlie Jellen with Applications Engineering, and this video is an overview of the condenser flow optimization feature inside my PLV. Quick overview on what we're trying to accomplish here. Obviously, as the name implies, we're going to try to find the optimum flow rate on the condenser side of the system. So there's a few different uh, pieces and components we need to look at. The cooling tower, the chiller, and then the condenser pipes and pumps. So how the tool is going to work is we're going to take all those components and we're going to size them for 3 GPM per ton. And then we're going to take the same or very similar pieces of equipment and we're going to run them at a lower flow rate. All right, we're going to iterate down from 3 GPM per ton down to 1.5 GPM per ton. And then we're going to take a look at annual energy results, so not just a, a full load design or part load points, but true annual energy, and try to see if there's a system flow rate on the condenser side of the system that gives you the lowest annual energy. As we start to look at the individual components on the condenser side of the system, we'll start to see that we have some competing energy consumers. And then we're going to walk through each one of these. We'll start with the chiller on the left. Now as the chiller sees lower flow, the delta T on the condenser is going to increase, which means we're going to increase the lift on the chiller. So as the, as the lift on the chiller increases, it consumes more energy. So the graph that we're showing you here on the right hand side is 3 GPM per ton, that's high flow, moving to the left, that's going to low flow. And you can see the power increases as we go to low flow on the chiller. As we move over to the pumps, right, the pumps are going to closely follow the affinity laws minus the tower static lift. So as we go from high flow to low flow, you can see the power uh, drops dramatically and that's by almost the cube of the flow rate. Right, the last one here is the cooling tower. Right? And during operation, if we're trying to achieve the same leaving temperature, but we send the tower, the send the heat exchanger, warmer water, we make that a more effective heat exchanger. So as we go from high flow to low flow, trying to maintain that leaving temperature off the tower, the tower fans can actually unload. So we'll save some energy there as we go from high flow down to low flow. Now, if this was just one point that we were looking at, say your design point, and we're trying to balance these three energy consumers out, that equation becomes pretty easy. We can do it on paper. But as we look at annual energy and we look at varying loads and varying lifts throughout the year, that equation becomes a lot harder and we need a tool to help us with that analysis. And that's where my PLV comes into play. All right, the inputs for the condenser flow optimization are really straightforward and should be known early on in the project, which is where this tool is going to be most beneficial. So the first thing is you're going to enter in the city that the project is located in. All right, this is going to bring in an ASHRAE 169 weather file for an entire year, 8760. The next thing you're going to enter in is the building type. All right, we have 10 different building types loaded into my PLV. Um, if they don't have your building type, we do have an option to enter in a custom load profile. And then the last information here is going to be the building peak load, the number of chillers operating in the plant, the size of each chiller, and then the chiller type. Is it variable speed or fixed speed? All right. For my PLV, we're always going to assume that the chillers are in parallel and that they're equally sized. The last pieces of information are all going to be for the tower. All right, remember, we're going to size all these components for 3 GPM per ton, and then we're going to iterate down to lower flow. So the information that we need here is the tower conditions at 3 GPM per ton. After you have your inputs in and you hit calculate, you're going to end up with a graph that looks like this. All right, what we're showing you here are the annualized KW per ton results for the system that you entered. All right now, on the far right hand side, we have your 3 GPM per ton case. And then as we go to the left, we're going to go to lower flow down to 1.5 GPM per ton. Inside each one of those bar graphs, we're looking at the three different components. We're going to show the chiller results in blue, condenser pump in orange, and then the tower fan in gray. All right, let's take a look at each one of these now. First, we'll look at the chiller. All right? and as we said before, as the chiller sees higher lift or lower flow, it's going to increase its power consumption. All right? So as we go from 3 down to 1.5, it's going to consume more power, right? And this is where most people stop, right? They just focus on the chiller. And if you only focused on the chiller, the case that looks the best is 3 GPM per ton, right? And so that would be your design point. But there's two other uh, components in the system that we need to look at. The first one is the condenser pumps. 
right? As we showed you before, as we go to lower flow, we're going to decrease the power consumption. So on an annualized result, you can see it here, from 3 down to 1.5, the pumps are going to consume a lot less energy. The last one is the cooling tower. As we send the cooling tower warmer water, we're going to make it a more effective heat exchanger, and it's going to consume slightly less energy as we go to lower flow. Right? Now the optimized flow rate is going to be the lowest combined total of all three of these components. And for this system, we can see 1.75 GPM per ton has the lowest overall system energy. Right? You can see we saved 6.6% over the base case 3 GPM per ton. Right? Now remember how we have this set up. Right? These are very similar components. So the difference between 3 and 1.75 GPM per ton in terms of the components, right? the cooling tower is exactly the same, the pipes are the same, the chiller is the same price, and as we go to lower flow, the condenser pumps can get smaller. All right? So at the very least, for the same price system, you can save 6.6% annual energy. All right? Now if you want to take this, uh, this case, 1.75 GPM per ton, and carry those values forward, you just hit that radio button and you can move on to the other parts of the tool. There's two other parts of the tool that you're going to find useful. The first one is to calculate my PLV conditions. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to give you an IPLV-like output, but it's going to be customized for your inputs. So we're going to reweight the different bins and then we're going to give you actual entering condenser temperatures that you'd see for your site. On the bottom here, we're showing you what the bid form looks like. This is the other section. Uh, what the bid form allows you to do is a side-by-side -side comparison of either different chillers, different chiller manufacturers, or different chiller options. And that's what I'm showing you at the bottom is the first case is a 90.1 starter machine, and then we're going to look at uh, adding an AFD or going to higher efficiencies and what those paybacks look like. And the paybacks are going to be based on both demand and consumption. So you can see on the right-hand side, we do have a place for you to enter in dollar per kWh, dollar per kW, and then a ratchet rate if you have one. All right, when is the best time to use this tool? I'd say early on in the design phase. The inputs required for this tool are fairly minimal, and they should be known early on. And what this will do, what this will do is it'll allow the design team to use the best design conditions from the start of the project. All right, and it'll help you from having to fight uphill later on in the project life cycle. I might say mid to low complexity jobs or chiller plants. Um, remember, my PLV is assuming the same size chillers, the same type of chillers, and in parallel. All right, once you go beyond that, it's really outside the, the scope of the tool. So series counter flow, ice chillers, heat recovery, anything like that, you're going to have to go to a different tool. Um, what I'd use it for, obviously optimizing the condenser flow, we walked through that. I'd use the bid form to compare different chiller paybacks, different options. And then the last one, which we didn't talk about but is also available, is there's four different types of tower control inside the program. Um, so you can iterate on those different tower controls and, and figure out which one works the best for your system type. To close this out, if you're interested in the tool or your customer is interested in the tool, it is a free download from train.com slash myplv. And if you need help getting started or have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to either Applications Engineering or any of the Chiller product support teams. We're happy to help. Thanks for your time.